Hi there. It's Streetwalk Guy. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic day because it's about to get even better. Are you ready for three amazing stories from Harrow? We're preparing to start an adventurous journey through its active town centre. Experience the effervescent energy that makes this location unique. And just wait until you hear our final story. It's a real game changer, featuring a mystery guest that will blow your mind. You won't believe who it is. So, are you all set? Great. Let's dive into our first story and see where it takes us. October 8th, 1952. On that fateful morning, shrouded by a dense fog, the Harrow and Wheelstone station held an air of routine calm. On platform four, a train waited, its presence marked by the hushed conversations of around 800 passengers. Unaware of the imminent danger, these individuals, primarily daily commuters, were caught in the brief lull of delay, the train having fallen seven minutes behind schedule. Meanwhile, the Perth Express, an overnight train bound for Euston and carrying around 85 passengers, was also running late due to the dense fog. As it approached Harrow and Wealdstone Station, it encountered a caution signal followed by two danger signals. However, for reasons unknown and never established due to the tragic outcome, the driver of the Perth Express did not heed these warnings. The Perth Express, hurtling through the foggy corridor at an alarming speed of 50-60 miles per hour, was like a missile locked onto an unseen target. In a catastrophic failure of safety protocols, the Express rammed into the rear of the unsuspecting local train with such force that it violently shoved the train forward, mangling and telescoping its last three coaches into a grotesque accordion of metal and debris. In the ensuing chaos, an eerie silence fell for a brief moment, only to be broken by the thunderous roar of another tragedy in motion. The Liverpool and Manchester Express, unaware and unprepared, crashed into the already devastated wreckage. The impact was colossal, sending shockwaves through the station and transforming the scene into a nightmarish landscape of twisted steel and despair. The back-to-back -back collisions not only wreaked havoc on the physical structures, but also sent ripples of panic, fear and confusion among the survivors and onlookers. The emergency services swiftly converged on the scene. By 8.22 a.m., the fire brigade, ambulance and police units were in full operation amidst the twisted wreckage and cries for help. Their efforts were bolstered by a medical unit from the United States Air Force, stationed at RAF South Royslip, who brought critical expertise and aid. The community of Harrow itself sprang into action. Residents, alongside members of the Salvation Army and the Women's Voluntary Service, rallied to offer support, showcasing a profound sense of unity in the face of calamity. Despite being one of the most catastrophic peacetime rail disasters in British history, the Harrow and Wealdstone rail crash of 1952 remains relatively unknown to many. This tragic event, which claimed 112 lives and injured around 340 people, is a crucial part of our history that needs to be told. It highlights not only the importance of rail safety, but also the remarkable bravery and community spirit in the face of adversity. Sharing and remembering such stories is vital to honour those affected and to learn from the past. Three trains were involved in the appalling railway disaster at Harrow and Wheelstone. Each was full of people and the station was also crowded with the result that British railways have suffered their worst accident. clock stopped at the time of the crash. While the train to Euston train was standing in the station, the night express from Perth ran into it, causing fearful damage and chaos. Then the Euston to Manchester express collided with the wreckage from the first collision. The scene has been described by an eyewitness as being like a battlefield. 
certainly no exaggeration, for casualties were on a terrible scale. Bandages were hastily improvised on the spot, and everything possible was done by all present to rescue and aid the injured. It was a grim and difficult task in the dreadful conditions prevailing. American troops from a nearby headquarters were quickly on the spot with invaluable blood plasma, but many of the injured were trapped in the wreckage. Their number could not yet be computed, nor was it known at this time how many had lost their lives in the tragedy. One thing, however, was already certain. The disaster was very great, the casualties very large in number. The whole country was shocked by the news, and everywhere the deepest sympathy was felt and expressed for the bereaved and for all who had been hurt. That brings us to the end of our first story, a captivating journey into the lives of a truly unique community. I hope this tale has sparked your curiosity and interest. If so, we deeply appreciate your support. A simple like and subscription can go a long way. Now, Prepare yourself as we're about to dive into another extraordinary narrative, rich in intrigue, overflowing with inspiration and marked by acts of bravery. Let's embark on this new adventure together. Here we go. Beneath the streets of Harrow, 1975, let me share with you a gripping story about Manus Gallagher and Seamus Green, two ordinary sewer workers whose day took an extraordinary turn. They descended into the sewers under St Anne's Road in Harrow, expecting nothing more than the usual day's work. But fate had other plans. While they were down there, the unimaginable happened. The tunnel around them, old and worn, suddenly gave way. In an instant, they were trapped under 30 feet of rubble engulfed in darkness so complete it was like being blindfolded. The shock of it was terrifying. They were isolated from the world above, not knowing if they would ever see daylight again. In those first moments, confusion and fear must have gripped them. Cut off from all help, they faced an uncertain future. Their ordeal under the streets of Harrow lasted for six agonizing hours. Six hours of uncertainty, pain and darkness, while above them, a drama of rescue and hope was unfolding. The team at Northwick Park Hospital, upon hearing of the collapse, immediately sprang into action, playing a pivotal role in the rescue operation. It was a race against time and every second mattered. The hospital's emergency response team coordinated closely with the rescue crews at the site. They prepared for every possible scenario, understanding that the condition of Manus and Seamus could be critical. As the rescuers worked tirelessly to remove the tons of soil pinning them down, the medical team readied themselves for immediate intervention. When Manus and Seamus were finally brought to the surface, it was a moment of profound relief mixed with urgency. Despite being weakened and injured, their survival was a testament to their incredible fortitude. They were rushed to Northwick Park Hospital, where a team of doctors, nurses and specialists were waiting. The hospital became a beacon of hope and resilience. The staff worked around the clock, ensuring that Manus and Seamus received the best care possible. Their injuries were serious, but treatable thanks to the swift and expert care they received. The solidarity and efficiency of the hospital staff in dealing with this crisis were remarkable. It was a clear display of their commitment, not just to their profession, but to humanity. So, are you ready for the next story? But here's a fun challenge. As the tale unfolds, see if you can guess the mysterious person do you think you can crack the code before the big reveal? If you figure it out, don't forget to drop a yes in the comments below 
to show off your detective skills. Let's get started. Once upon a time, in the late 19th century, a young boy enrolled in the headmaster's boarding house at a prestigious school in Harrow. The year was 1888, and the boy, often misunderstood and underappreciated, was a unique character among his peers. He was not the most academically inclined student, but he had a fiery spirit and an undeniable charisma. The boy struggled with the rigid and classical curriculum of his school. Despite his difficulties, he developed a passion for the English language and history, subjects that would greatly influence his future. His years at the school were not without challenges. He faced many setbacks and was often considered rebellious and uncontrollable. Yet, he had a certain resilience, an unyielding determination that kept him pushing forward. After leaving school in 1892, he embarked on a military career, traveling to distant lands and participating in various campaigns. His experiences abroad, combined with his inherent bravery and leadership skills, began to shape him into a formidable character. During this time, he also discovered his writing talent and authoring accounts of his adventures and experiences in foreign lands. As the years progressed, this young man transitioned into the world of politics, driven by a deep-seated desire to serve his country. His early political career was marked by numerous ups and downs, with several defeats and setbacks. However, his persistence and eloquence slowly won him respect and admiration. He became known for his powerful speeches, his ability to inspire, and his unorthodox approach to politics. The outbreak of the Second World War was the turning point in his life. Thrust into a leadership role during one of the darkest times in history, he became a beacon of hope and resilience. His speeches rallied a nation under siege and his strategic insights were crucial in navigating the complexities of a global conflict. It was during this time that he returned to his old school. Standing before a new generation of students, he delivered a speech that would become one of his most famous. Never give in, a simple yet powerful message that resonated not just with the students, but with the entire nation and the world. His leadership during the war earned him a place in history as one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century. He was a man of many talents, a politician, a writer, an artist, and above all, a visionary leader. This remarkable individual who began his journey in the corridors of Harrow School, who faced adversity and overcame it, who led a nation through its darkest hour, was none other than Winston Churchill. His life story is a testament to the power of resilience, determination, and the enduring spirit of human courage. Almost a year has passed since I came down here at your headmaster's kind invitation in order to cheer myself and cheer the hearts of a few of my friends by singing some of our own songs. The 10 months that have passed have seen very terrible catastrophic events in the world, ups and downs, misfortunes, but can anyone sitting here this afternoon, this October afternoon, not feel deeply thankful for what has happened in the time that has passed and for the very great improvement in the position of our country and of our home. Why, when I was here last time, we were quite alone, desperately alone, and we had been so for five or six months. We were poorly armed, we are not poorly armed today. But then we were very poorly armed. We had the unmeasured menace of the enemy and their air attack still beating upon us. And you yourselves had had experience of this attack. And I expect you are beginning to feel impatient that there has been this long lull with nothing particular turning up. 
You cannot tell from appearances how things shall go. Sometimes imagination makes things out far worse than they are, yet without imagination not much can be done. Those people who are imaginative see many more dangers than perhaps exist, certainly many more than will happen. But then they must also pray to be given that extra courage to carry this far-reaching imagination. But for everyone, surely, what we have gone through in this period, I'm addressing myself to the school, surely in this period of 10 months, this is the lesson. Never give in, never give in, never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. We stood all alone a year ago, and to many countries it seemed that our account was closed. We were finished. All this tradition of ours, our school history, our songs, this part of the history of our country, all were gone and finished and liquidated. Very different is the mood today. Britain, other nations thought, had drawn a sponge across her slate. But instead, our country stood in the gap. There was no flinching, no thought of giving in. And by what seemed almost a miracle to those outside these islands, though we ourselves never doubted it, we now find ourselves in a position where I say we can be sure that we have only to persevere to conquer. You sang here a verse of a school song. You sang that extra verse written in my honor which I was very greatly complimented by and which you have repeated today. But there is one word in it I want to alter. I wanted to do so last year, but I did not venture to. It is the line, not less we praise in darker days. I've obtained the headmaster's permission to alter darker to sterner. Not less we praise in sterner days. Do not let us speak of darker days. Let us speak rather of sterner days. These are not dark days. These are great days. The greatest our country has ever lived. And we must all thank God that we have been allowed, each of us according to our station, to play a part in making these days memorable in the history of our race. Thank you for joining me in discovering these three true and remarkable stories. If they touched you as they did me, please show your support with a like. I'm eager to explore more, so if you have suggestions for must-visit places in the UK, drop a comment below. And remember to subscribe for more heartfelt journeys. Your support helps us share more true stories. Until next time, take care.